Um, I want to say karibu sana to all of you. What a week we have had. It looks like I've been with you the whole week. So, ni mwamis lakini si sana juu kuna wenyo tuliko tunaonana pamoja the whole week. We've had the ICC 2023 and it's been a wonderful time. Let me just see by a show of hands if you are able to attend even one session of the ICC. Okay, even those of you who attended online. Inu watu mkono. Oh wow, that's almost the whole church. That's great. That's really amazing. Glory to God. We continue to move together in the same direction, and we are glad to have all of you here today. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord. It is the honor of my life to serve God and his people here at the DCKZ under Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani. And I am so glad, so glad to stand here today. It's almost Christmas, guys. It's almost hey, the, hey, the year has not been hard, that hard. It's almost Christmas. <laughs> Okay, unajua sasa mko mko uko mkubwa sasa Christmas ina ile celebration ilikuwa na you're not looking to, forward to new clothes. If you're looking forward to new clothes when do unazinunua so you're really not looking forward to that. It's not like back in the day. If there's going to be traveling anywhere you're the one who's going to pay for it. So it's just like acha ni kai Nairobi. Ah uh, but our services are still going to be going on just in case you're going to be left in the city. Don't you worry. We might move to the main campus just for some time but you know Don't, don't you worry. All you need to know is that the doors will be opened. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to try and um, finish what we started a few Sundays ago. Uh, last Sunday, we had the in-gathering here. Allow me to say on behalf of Bishop Dr. Jimmy and the entire pastoral team, thank you so much for showing up, for coming and being with us, for um, bringing your contributions, for coming early to church, for staying to the very end we want to say thank you so so much it feels like a family because it truly is because of people like you thank you so much the lord bless you we'll continue to bring you updates i don't have the updates of the figures but we're going to be bringing you those updates um soon <laughs> as soon as we receive them fully all right we want to get into it so uh, come to jesus is what we were talking about we're in matthew chapter 11 and that's what we spoke about uh, or we started to speak about we went through the book of matthew chapter 11 and it has 30 verses and we read all of them the last time we were together we're not going to read all of them today if you missed that installment you can go to our youtube channel so that we can be able to um, connect or join the dots but just to help those of us who are not here Jesus is already well into his ministry by this time there is a man a cousin of Jesus a relative of Jesus his name is John the Baptist and um, John has been thrown in prison he's just about to be killed or executed but he's been thrown in prison and while he's inside there he has a bit of a crisis of faith of sorts and so he sends his disciples to go and ask Jesus to go and ask whether Jesus is truly the one he sends his disciples says are you the coming one or should we wait for another one even though John the Baptist was there when Jesus was being baptized because he actually baptized Jesus he asks Jesus ni wewe ama kuna mwingine tunangojea because while he was in prison there was some difficulty of course you expect imprisonment just like it is now even back then is not as easy as when you're free freedom even with all its difficulty is not the same is not the same as when you're in prison if you've gone to visit people in prison then you know that imprisonment is something else imagine just wanting to go even people that's why house arrest is a thing because even when you're in the house you have everything you have you can't just get up and go wherever you want to go it's a thing so john the baptist um starts to have a bit of a crisis there sends his disciples and jesus sends the disciples back and say to him go and tell him what you see that's in verse 3 uh, verse 4 tell him that the blind can see and the lame can walk and the deaf can now hear the lepers are cleansed the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is one who is not offended because of me and you remember we handled that area of offense especially those of us who are offended by Jesus and we said what does it look like to be offended by God it easily looks like those of us who are waiting on God to do something and we are wondering why is God not doing for me because i have been walking with God i have been trusting him i have been um faithful i have been calling on his name and still I have not seen the results for the things that I'm trusting him for. I thought that God ought to have answered me by now because I am praying, I am fasting. It's easy to get offended when you think you are doing the right things yet God is not doing his part. Because many times when we look at salvation, we look at it as if it is God versus us. 
And so I move my chess. How many of you ch play chess, have played chess or draft? Is that what it's called, the game? You. Like you're just, you make a move and then God makes a move. Most of us look at our relationship with God that way. Or we look at prayer that way. That you make your move and then God makes his move. You make your move, then God makes his move. And so if you make your move and God is not making his move in your favor, you easily get offended. And we looked at the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, Baba and Mama John the Baptist, who were people who were righteous, they were devout, and um, they were old. And Elizabeth was also, on top of being old, was also barren. And they had waited for a child, and a child had not come. Now, these were not people who were living in sin. These were people who were living in righteousness. Zechariah was a priest. Elizabeth was devout. She was of the priestly lineage of Aaron. They were good people by all standards of the word. But still, the thing that they had wanted was not coming to them, which was a son. And so they had waited and waited and waited, and now they were old, and there didn't seem to be answers coming. And we looked at the example thinking, it is easy for such people to be offended because we wait on God to come through, and he doesn't come. And remember, by the time we're coming to the end of the service, for those of you who are here, we said that some of us, we carry offense in our hearts against God, and we don't even know it. We are just mad throughout. You're wondering, why hasn't God answered my prayer? Why is my family falling apart? The question that always comes through, why do bad things happen to, to good people? Who are the good people? Yeah, we're wondering, why do bad things happen to good people? It's so easy to take offense at God, and you not even know. You see, also because we've been brought in a, in a culture of honor, we know we are supposed to honor God. And so you will not be hard blaming God or saying, I'm so mad at God. But in your heart, you carry that offense. In your heart, you're walking around wondering, why is God not moving things in my favor? So you get discouraged. The result, the direct result of that is that we stop going to church. We stop gathering around fellowship. We stop being around people that can, um, you know, people that are godly or godlike. We stop it. We just disappear. We drop off the surface. People start looking for you, the people in your fellowship, the people in your teams. They start calling you and asking you, what's happening? Where are you? And you're just like, oh, you know, I'm just going through a season. If you allow that season to persist without checking it, then that's how people fall away from the faith. And so Jesus, in response, says to the, uh, the disciples of John, says to them, go and tell him what you can see. Go and tell him that the blind can see and that the lame can walk and that the lepers are cleansed and that um, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And he says, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And so they go out. And Jesus starts to commend John the Baptist to the people, and he speaks about John the Baptist. And then he brings in a portion of scripture that a lot of us know, if not by heart, we have heard many, many times. He says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And we took some time to just delve into that, to try and understand what does it truly mean in the most correct way to for the violent to take it by force. Understanding that Jesus communicating to them that even the kingdom being brought to us did not just come like that. The kingdom was communicated to us by violence. Why violence? Because if you look at the events that happened on the cross when Jesus Christ was um, paying for our sins, for the sins of you and me, when you look at those events, those were not pretty events. Jesus did not just merely faint. He died and he didn't just collapse. He died a brutal death. He was put to death. He was beaten and battered and broken. And all the violent things that you could think about, including the crown of thorns and the spear to his side, all those things were done to Jesus, the price that needed to be paid so that you and I might have our freedom. So that is what Jesus is talking about. First of all, that the kingdom was communicated to us by violence, by force. And so he says, in like manner then, the violent shall take it by force. So what again does it mean for the violent to take it by force? Not to mean that you do everything in your power to make sure that you get whatever you want. Because that's the sorry understanding that many of us might have. That I will get to the top by hook or by crook. That is what it looks like. That I will kill everybody in my prayer. You know those violent prayers? For die by fire, die by force. Everybody who is occupying my seat in parliament, die now by fire. You're not considerate. You're not thinking that that person has a family. That I would join in. You're just like, I must get to the top. The Lord has promised me. So we're trying to look at, is that the right way to pray? And we gave the example of this woman who was a Sunday school teacher. And she said, um, 
that she, she started complaining to her pastor, saying that, Pastor, I've been teaching Sunday school for many years, and I have never seen the fruit or the result of my labor. I've never seen any one of the young people say they want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. The same could be said by a teen's pastor. The same could be said by a youth pastor, that I'm preaching Sunday after Sunday, and I'm not seeing a single hand go up, say they want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I could easily be offended, thinking maybe this thing does not work. And so the pastor was asking this woman, have you desired even to the point of violence? And the woman was like, ah, violence. Maybe I should pinch them. I understand now. Maybe I should pinch them when I'm making the altar call. Okoka ama nikuchune. Okoka ama nikupige. Okoka ama... You see, a lot of us, maybe when we came into the kingdom, how we came into this story is that we were threatened into heaven. Do you have a witness in the house? You are told, if you don't give your life to Jesus tonight, your soul shall rot in hell. And they're like, hey, bro. You see, if you're scared in the kingdom... It is Juanita Bynum that says, whatever you do to get something, you have to keep doing it to keep that thing. Yeah? So if you think about if you are scared, if I scare you into salvation, then I have to keep scaring you. And I don't think anybody has that kind of time in the world. Does Is there anybody in the world that can keep just coming up with scenarios? We are just handing over the baton with Pastor Beatrice. Nina was care for service, yeah, Nakuja and was care second service. Next Sunday, Nina Patia Pastor Wangesh. Yo Sunday, Gine, Nina Patia Pastor Joy. Anyway, to make it chini to Kapanga, ah, what to Lazima to Kai to Kyo Govia. Yo Wakai Kaukovu. No, it's not an effective way of doing anything. We are one to the kingdom by love. The Bible says in John 3.16, which we all know by heart. Let's say it together. For God so loved that he that believes in him should not but have starts by communicating to us that even though the kingdom was brought to us by violence, it was because of love. That's the thing that wins us over. So we, 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 we realize that the point of violence then, even for such as a teacher, as this Sunday school teacher, is not for it is that your soul desires something to the point of anguish. Unaketi and you're asking yourself, what am I willing to do to get this thing? And some of you may be able to understand when we are talking about the idea of fasting and praying for something. And we said when you're fasting and praying for something, it is you beating and battering your body so that you can get enough discipline just to hear what God is saying. It's not so that it, it doesn't move the needle with God. At if I fast 40 days, God is just going to wake up from his seat and think, ah, 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 give this man his answer before he dies. Give him his answer. No. I am fasting those 40 days because in the 40 days, either God will do something or he will speak to me concerning what he wants me to do concerning this issue. Remember we gave the example, and let me just give it because it's going to uh, usher us into the things we want to share today. If a young lady here, um, Redemptor for instance, uh, came to me, Redemptor is not yet married, and Redemptor comes to me and she says, Pastor, I have seen a man, let's pray together. I'm like, hallelujah, it is my joy to see the young ladies in the house get married, get married correctly in holy matrimony, hallelujah. Say my amen, you only point. Wonderful. So Redemptor comes to me and tells me, this is just an example. She comes and says, I have seen a man, a wonderful man, a God-fearing man, a man of God, in fact. I'm like, oh, is that so? Let's pray together. And then in the course of the prayer, she comes and tells me, Pastor, I want to let you know who it is so that you can pray with insight. I'm like, come on, come on. You know, that's the kind of tea. That, yes. And Redemptor tells me, um, it is Mr. So-and-so. I say, which Mr. So-and-so? And he says, yeah, that Mr. Husband of Mrs. So-and-so. I'm like, ah, that one is the one you've seen. So like, yes, that mighty, mighty man of God. I'm like, ah, it sh you think I will continue to pray after that? We shall no longer pray because it doesn't matter if Redemptor fasts for 40 days or 100 days. There is no way in heaven or hell that God is going to communicate that man to her. Just trying to understand that it is not violence in the sense of violence as we see it. The violence is in the, in, in the sense of we are ready to persevere and to sit with God long enough for him to communicate his will concerning the things we are asking him for. That is that the violence shall take it by force. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Si ati tu whatever I want if I set my mind on it. There was an advertisement by I think Ribena back in the day and those those black current things, fruits, juices, those things. This just be if I concentrate, if I concentrate, I can. And then they just explode into some juicy juicy goodness. That's not it. That's not how we receive the things that we want from God. If I pause in the place of prayer for 40 days and 40 nights, I can receive that thing that I want. If it is not in the will of God, you could fast until you turn blue and lose all your kilos. It's not coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, January cometh. Mm, mm, mm. 40 days of January. Hali ya 40 kwa kweli. Hali ya 40. Anza kutafuta prayer partner saa hizi. Mapema. Ndiyo muanze safari ya kukula Christmas pamoja. Ndiyo mkingi ya nini. Eh? Akufaye kwa viki and other short stories. So Jesus communicates those things. And as he's talking to them about the violent, taking it by force, he gets into just speaking about the cities where he did great things and people did not believe. The cities where he worked things and people still did not believe. And he's saying, woe to those cities, woe to them. It says, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for those cities who did not believe what Jesus says. Because there is benefit in the words that Jesus has been communicating. Jesus is speaking to these people. He's letting them know that throughout the years and the days, I take time to speak to you and to tell you what you ought to do. But some of you do not believe it. You want, I don't know how you want it to be communicated, but fine. But a day is going to come. The day of judgment is going to come. And this not to scare them, but to tell them the reality. You see, again, just like we've said, there are many believers, especially us young believers, or youthful believers, rather, who think every time somebody mentions the last day and somebody mentions the day of judgment and the day of the coming of the Lord, we think, oh, these people are just trying to scare us. That's not it. It's just us mentioning the truth because the day is coming. Bonus, if you To scare you is to try and show you that there is nothing else right now here. You, your life is doomed. After that, it, oh, it is, oh, my goodness. So you're just like, out of fear you come to the Lord. If your response to the gospel is fear, then it is not the right response. Every time you hear what Jesus Christ has done, you ought to think, what manner of love is this? That should be your response. If you feel fear in your heart, don't even feel the need to make a decision. That's not the right response. Sit down and ask God to help you to understand correctly because the response must be the response of love. So he says, at that time, Jesus, verse 25, answers and says, I thank you, Father, the Lord of heaven and of earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes or to babies, really. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. 27, all things have been delivered to me by my Father and no one knows except the son no one knows the son sorry except the father nor does anyone know the father except the son and the one to whom the son wills to reveal to him then he says in verse 28 come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me because my yoke for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you'll find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light that's the portion of scripture we want to just zero in on today for just a bit. After Jesus has already spoken about all those things and all the things that have been happening right from the offense that he's been speaking about, from the doubt of John the Baptist to the offense that he's speaking about, to the um, idea of praying and seeking him and desiring things, the will of God violently, to the place of um, him speaking about the judgment of the cities that had and saw him move and did not react or come to him then now he comes to speak about the kind of rest and the mission that he has come to do so jesus communicates about from verse 25 you can see the relationship that he has with the father we can be able to see that jesus christ referring to himself in all boldness as the true son of god jesus christ presenting himself first to the people because it is important who has said whatever words you see the person who says these words we said it here many times before the person who has said a set of words. That person, Mesema, matters. The sayer of the words matters. Am I communicating? 
ule mtu mwenye anasema something that person truly truly does matter for instance take you back to the uh, covid times remember there were people who used to come every evening and just communicate to us and tell us now there has been a curfew extension from today the curfew is no longer from 7 the curfew is from 8 then the curfew moved from 8 and it moved went to 10 and then I think it moved back, and a lot of you were caught out by the curfew several times. And, you know, some of you felt the wrath, the heat of the law and enforcers, and some of you did not. Now, if that curfew was communicated by the right people, the whole nation moved in the direction of abiding by that new time. Lakini kama ilikuwa tu mtu wakawaida, stories are jabs. Pale tu. Msetu ananza kuambia, ah, by the way, yu kafi watasia maana, kafi yumeisha, kutoka leo kafi ni seven. Will you just move the kafi? Because, because it matters who has said a word. That's why it is very important every time you're reading the scriptures. When I was shopping for my Bible, I was looking for my, this Bible, this particular Bible. Um, I've had a total of two Bibles all my life. I've had one Bible since the time I gave my life to Christ in high school. An old, torn, tattered RSV Bible, really, really old. Um, I still have it with me. I don't use it. Uh, I actually don't use it. It's highlighted and underlined almost everywhere. I like to think, should the Lord grace me the honor of having children, I will give it to my firstborn. You know, there's just those things you're thinking about. Just uh, I don't know what they will do with it because it's really tattered and really old. They will need to do a great repair job. But anyway, then the second Bible, as I was thinking about getting this, this, this Bible, I, I went out. I got a friend of mine. Um, from the Ibada team and we went shopping. Tukaenda tukazurura maduka ya yote, ma textbook center, ma biblica, ma duka zote za biblia zote zinyo anauza books. And we were shopping for Bibles. And her, she wanted um, a message, a physical message paraphrase Bible, and me, I wanted a New King James. But I was very specific. One of the things I wanted was that I wanted a New King James Bible because the words of Jesus Christ in the New Testament are written in red. Why? That was important for me. It might not be important for everybody, but why it's important, it was important for me was because I just wanted nikifungua tu hivi ni najua hapa ni yesu alisema. It was direct speech. I like to tickle myself thus, and this is just me, guys. I like to tickle myself in this way, to think every word, of course, scripture will tell us that every, all scripture is inspired by God. Sindio? So every word that we find in the Holy Scriptures is inspired by God. It is the word of God. That's what we call it. But I tickle myself by saying there are words that Jesus or that God did not entrust the human mouth with saying. In fact, he decided to say them himself because he, decide, he desired that those words not be paraphrased. I, re, I, I like to just enjoy it. I enjoy just taking some time to, just today I'm just going to look out for the words that Jesus spoke directly. I just want to, and when I'm reading, when I'm using my Bible, those words are in red. So it's just flip, read, read it. I'm like, oh, this is what Jesus said directly. Anyway, that's just a little bit of, of how I do my Bible study. We said here that you must look for ways to make study of the Bible enjoyable. Bonnet was few. So whatever it is that works for you, just do that thing. Just don't stop reading the word. Anyway, so the words of Jesus Christ himself saying that I I'm the son of God. He speaks with a lot of joy, saying, I thank you, Father of heaven and Lord of earth, be, um, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even though he says to them that no one knows the father except the son, and no one knows the son except the father. Then he says, as a result of those things, he, having identified himself as the son of God, he says, come to me, all you who labor or all you who are heavy laden. I want to look at three things and then we're going to be done. The first thing, as we're looking at that portion of scripture, Jesus having identified himself as the son of God. You remember that that portion of scripture starts by John sending people out to go and ask, are you the one who is coming or should we wait for another one? And Jesus, you, might, you must remember, does not give a direct answer and says to them, I am the one. Go and tell him, I am the one who is coming. No. He says, go and tell him the things which you have seen. Go and tell him that the blind see, the lame walk, and so on and so forth. So it is exciting for us, or it must be exciting for us, to read and see Jesus actually much later answering that question from John. He is identifying himself to us. He says, I am not just another one of the people who are going to come. I am not one of the prophets. I am he. I am the son. So again, it excites us to remember that it is the Son of God who is sharing these words. Those words mean 
everything because of the person who is saying them. Those words carry all the weight because of the person who is saying them. These are not the words of an old scholar or an old theologian. These are not the words of a Pharisee or a teacher of the law. These are not the words of a prophet, even a high a prophet as Akina Moses and Elijah. No, these are the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself. When they are the words of Jesus, or when we understand that, then those words carry weight. Those words are words of life that can do something. So the Son of God says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, why that is important, the first thing we're looking at is the invitation. The invitation. Jesus stands and says, come to me. All you who labor. Such an open blank check. Recently when we looked here at John chapter 3, and we went through the entirety of it, and we looked at John chapter 3 when we got to verse 16, we looked at the kind of inv invitation which we've just recited, because it says that whosoever believes in him, that is such a blank check, and that was the nature of Jesus. Every time you look at the words of Jesus, whatever he's preaching, his invitation is not constricting. It is such an open, wide blank check that anybody can come to him. He says, come to me all you who labor. Now, it is a wide invitation. The invitation, as we're looking at the invitation, that's number one. But um, we look at the invitation, we look at two parts of the invitation. The invitation is wide. Why is it wide? Because he says, come to me, all you who labor. Now, it is wide because all you who labor and all you who are heavy laden is many people. It is open to as many people as labor. As many people are as heavy laden. Buona esto si Everybody can come to him. Whatever it is that is the weight that is on your shoulder. The poor, the broken, the anxious, the diseased, the hungry, the thirsty, the failing, the failed. All of them, he says to them, come to me. Hallelujah. He says, come to me, all you who labor. It's an open invitation. But that invitation, when we look at it, is also a narrow invitation. Why is it narrow? Because the people who come must first accept that they are the ones who labor and are heavy laden. So it is open, but it is narrow, or it is wide in the fact that it allows everybody to come, but it is narrowed by the fact that this everybody that comes must accept or admit that they are the ones who are being called by Jesus. Tukopamoja. Because it is possible for you to be heavy laden, but for you to act like you're not heavy laden. Or to not acknowledge. A friend of mine said recently that God cannot heal who you pretend to be. God heals you, who you are. If God is going to take the weight off of your shoulder, he's going to carry the weight that is actually on your shoulder. But if you're just out here positing as if you don't even need help, like me, I'm good, me, I'm okay, I don't need any help from everyone, I'm independent, I'm all by myself, I don't need no help from nobody, no help is going to come. That is the thing that constricts the wide invitation of Jesus Christ. The person who comes to Jesus must accept that they have a load that needs to be taken off of their shoulders. I don't know that we have people that have loads in the house today. I don't know about you, but I know that I have a fair share of loads that I desire to bring to Jesus every day. You must acknowledge the loads that you carry on your back. You must acknowledge every single thing that you want to bring to Jesus Christ. Now, somebody said one of the... Um, uh, scholars, his name is Carson, and Carson says that the word labor implies the burdens that we take upon ourselves, and the heavy laden implies the burdens that other people put on us. All right, so two kinds of people here. The first one he says, Come to me, all you who labor. The people who labor are the people, are the burdens that we put upon ourselves. Okay, so the things that nobody has required of you, but for some reason you feel like you just want to take this burden upon yourself because I don't know, you feel like that system of works is going to save you, is going to carry you through and take you to where you desire to be, is going to gain you more favor with God. That is the people who labor. Then the people who are heavy laden, to be heavy laden has the idea of people I'm going try and explain that a little bit more. Do you know of people who have problems, but those problems are not your problems, but somehow they have made those problems your problems? You guys don't understand? Bishop <laughs> JB. 
throughout the course of my life, I find that with the kind of work that I do, with the kind of um, person that I am, especially even in the family, in the family and in the ministry, I realize there are burdens that I have of myself. Okay, there are loads that I have of myself. But then there are many other loads that I carry that belong to other people that are not mine. Those loads sometimes are not loads that are here. They're not necessarily bad loads. But they are heavy loads anyway. Ni kama umetoka supermarket, umenunua chakula. Ni mzito. Ama umenunua mtungi ya gas. Let's use that one. The big 13 kg. The one that you penguin around when you have it. Simna understand Kenya sema. When you're carrying that one, it is not a bad load. It is not a wicked thing. It's not rubbish. It is necessary weight. But it's still heavy. You still require that man that has been lifting weights in the supermarket. Even those, even the men. There's no shame, men, in kubebewa yom tungia gas. Yes, 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 yes. Me, I will proud, proudly, I'll just stand there. Proud. I don't feel like my masculinity is shattered at all. Just let somebody just lift the, just, you know. Kini wengine too. You're just breaking your back. Just, I must carry this by hook or... It's okay. But you see, that simple illustration is a lot of how most of us relate even with Jesus. He has given you an open invitation to bring your weight and your load to him. It is not necessarily bad weight, but it is still heavy. The things that people have brought on you are still heavy. The expectations of this life are still heavy. And I know I'm speaking to young people in the house today. People who are trying to figure their lives out. People who still are not yet what they shall be. That's a word. You're not yet what you're going to be. You are in school and the weight of education. My goodness. If they gave you a chance today, you would leave it and say it is not a must. See, must. Lakini itabidi tu sa utafanya nini. Ama uko kazini and you have a boss that... You want to pray those die-by-fire bosses, prayers. Well, that boss is from hell. Or supervisor that comes from the devil. That one must have fellowship with the demons in the night. But you can't just pick up and leave because you have expectations at home. Some of you are supporting their families. Some of you are the ones who are paying rent for your peoples. Some of you have relatives who are unwell. Or you have parents, and that's the sad reality of life. You have parents, but you're the one who is parenting your parents. Those are necessary weights. Because ukiacha sasa watafanya nini. So you have to do those things. It's heavy. It's not a bad thing. So I'm not advocating that you just throw your hands in the air and just, just walk around. Just forget everything and just live your own life. No. Those are weights that are necessary, but you can bring them to Jesus. But I if you but a lot of us, we struggle with them. We're just like, no, I'm going to carry my weights. I'm just going to carry them. So you come to church, you're heavy laden. Ni burdens umekelewa na watu. You're tired. You're even angry. You know, when you're tired, you're even irritable. You don't even want anybody to touch you. Fine, umekanyagwa. Let me give an example here. I, th I think it was really hilarious. Um, a couple of Sundays back, I, I had white shoes on. And so I came to, to the service. And it was muddy. I had not anticipated for it to be muddy. When I came to the service outside, in between the break for first service and second service, I didn't go out. Okay. I just remained around here because <laughs> that was the load I had placed on myself. The heavy weight. Okay. So I, I, I couldn't take a simple bathroom break because I needed to just be around here. Just, whew. Anyway. Now, outside there, somebody said to me, when we were coming to the end of second service, somebody said to me, uh, one of you people said to me, uh, how have you managed to stay two services this long into the day and you have not had anyone step on you? Because if someone stepped on me... <laughs> so I said, I said to them, oh, it's really simple. I have not interacted with people today. They're like, that is the price I had to pay for this kind of decision that I made today. I just stood outside there. Just a hello. Hi. And you know me, I'm a hugger. Just like... Just. It was a really difficult Sunday. Um, <laughs> but, so, an example like that, if somebody were to step on my shoes, I'd be mad. That's a, you know, it's a bad... It's, I'm mad. 
But it doesn't warrant me to blow up the place and even the people in the service now, everybody in the compound knows kuna kitu imetendeka ile pande. Fine, I'll be mad, but it's not to the point of distraction. I'm just like, it's just shoes. Right? But a lot of us are carrying heavy weights and we are so heavy laden. Something small triggers you to the point of explosion. It is an explosion of mtu tu amekwambia tu kitu kidogo umekasirika umejam ume you you cut ties with everybody i'm even leaving the church you're like hey please just come down the problem is not me there's something that's happening inside of your life you need to check that come to jesus bro bring it to the lord in prayer bona so if you so the idea of being um for laboring and for us being heavy laden jesus says all of you regardless of whether the load has been placed on you by yourself or whether it is a load that has been placed on you by other people just come to me open invitation wide invitation but there are still are things that keep us from coming to him and a lot of those things are just small small things things like pride just like you see many times we have the open invitation we are saying just we have the ministry team here if you're going through something and you'd like to pray with somebody you just come and pray with them a lot of us refuse to come not because we don't have things we're going through but because you're thinking sasa nikienda hapo mbele si kila mtu ataanza kuniona after service anaanza kuniambia eh umse ana go through a lot can i tell you something that is true everybody look at your neighbor look at your neighbor look them straight in the eye look them dead in the eye you see that neighbor you're looking at like that that neighbor is going through things which you cannot begin to imagine you forget the way they are looking so pretty and so calm and composed yesterday when we were going to the wedding we were with some of my brothers and in the car we were just talking about how life has this thing that it just moves on life just keeps moving and it's so annoying because you're going through a key season but you know you won't just carry a placard saying don't come close to me today i am wounded and heavy and battered so people will still talk to you however they want to talk to you people will still require those of you who work in offices people will still require that end of year report people will still require you to do the assignments you've been given your landlord is still going to need rent doesn't care whether you've lost a loved one the life will keep moving on but you see that's the excitement we have in knowing we have a savior that daily says to us come to me bona so if you such that if you do not come it's not on him because he has made a wide invitation and says come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden whether your burden is because of yourself or because of somebody else just come to me hallelujah so we have a response to make that at every day so long as i am breathing i am going to come to jesus and when i come to jesus i'm not coming by myself i'm coming with my load and with my labor because again a lot of us present ourselves at the place of jesus christ nimekam nakuza wapi mzigo ile ulikuwa umebeba ah nimeacha na huku nje nimekuja tu hasa reason ni ukuje na mzigo ndio akubebe Hazo umeiacha huko. And ni wewe ni ombe tu nikitoka nitaenda nichukue niende nayo nitakuwa nimepata nguvu. A lot of us that's how we deal with it. Somebody is offering let me give another example. Ile mtungi ya gas. Nime offer kukusaidia kubeba mtungi wako wa gas hadi mahali ambako unaenda. Hiyo mtungi haijatengenezwa ati uko unatembea nayo. Si ndio? Ni uibebe from point A from the shop to the house you connect it and that's it. True? So I've offered to help you carry it from one place to the other. Then tell me um apana badala hiyo when ili pia membership ya gym ni nwe chuma nikipata nguvu nitarudia hiyo mtungi. Wewe unajua hiyo nguvu haitakuja leo. So mtakuwa mnafanya nini na mnataka hiyo gas? The other alternative is this. You're like ama uninunulie lunch ni kule ni shibe alafu nitajibebea mtungi. I'm like what is this attachment that you have an healthy attachment you have to carrying the load yourself why do you feel the need to carry the load by yourself what emotional connection is this that you would rather die carrying the load than bring it to somebody who has given you help 
And that's a good question to ask ourselves. Because some of us are struggling with things that are so difficult. And it's not that there's no help available, not just from Jesus, even from his servants, from a brother or sister that he's placed next to you. It's not like there's no help, but you are just unangangana afadhali ni kufe. You, you need to pause and ask yourself, why am I so emotionally attached to carrying this weight by myself? Why can't I just share with somebody? Why can't I just take it to the Lord in prayer? Fine. Maybe some of you don't want to expose yourselves like that. I don't know why. But fine. If you want to carry it like that, take it to Jesus yourself. Okay. I have no problem with that. But at least take it to Jesus. Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor. Come to Jesus. The first part is the invitation. Wide, open invitation. But we've said it's also narrow because you must be willing to accept that you're carrying a load or that you're laboring so that you can come to Jesus. The second part of it, quickly, is the promise. The promise that we have. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And he makes the promise. He says, I will do what? I will give you. That's the promise we have. We have such a beautiful promise. Rest for weary souls. From Jesus. You see, if somebody is telling me, come to me, we'll see what we'll do. There's not much of a promise there, is there? It says, come to me. Just, just come to me. Like, then? You know, I don't know. Just come to me. Like, I can't. See, that's why some of your relationships are no longer existent. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you, somebody is telling you, ah, kuja kwangu. Then, mekunyo kahawa kumi. You don't even like coffee that much, but you brave it every time. Just because you want to be with this person. And then this person is never hata why launch manifesto. Hakwambi why he's telling you come to me. Muna kunyo tu makahawa. Makahawa. Jamani kahawa uneza jinundia kahawa number one. Shilingi 50. Wende ukakoroge kwako jamani. You want to be, you want to go to somebody. It's that much more enticing to go to somebody who is telling you what they want. Some defects. <laughs> Niki Kwambia, come to me. I want to make you my wife. This is what I think we can do together. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. Me and you, we can chase ten thousand. We can raise a godly generation. Okay, it also doesn't have to be that deep. It's just like, I really like you. I just wanted to spend life together. Like, I love you. I like you. Okay. 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 You want to be with somebody who is telling you, why are we together? Why are we here? So many of us, and especially, sadly, 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 many of us, many, it's the ladies who are constantly just being, asking the question, what are we? Who are we? What are we doing? Like, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's holy nation, but what are we? Me and you. What are we? What are you promising? What's your agenda? <laughs> What's your, what, like, I'm trying to say, it makes it that much easy to come to somebody who has promised you what they want or why you're coming. See, that's how schools do their publicity. They tell you, come to this school, the school of choice. You give us a child, we give you a, an intellectual. You're like, oh, wow, I will take my child to this academy. Academy, kuko chini mvunguni umazima manuko maali. Lakini, wameku promise makubwa, unapeleka mtotoa kuko. Because they've made a promise. See, that's how some of us invest with some of these companies that sink our money. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, we've been there, we've been there, guys. But God, Hallelujah. They, they, they sell you something. They tell you, come, I will make you wealthy. And you're like, it is wealth I want. So you come. It, people are won over by a promise. 
think about the example that we just gave. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not, but what? That's the promise of all promises, guys. We come to Jesus because there are many things he has placed for us. How great and awesome promises he has laid in store for those who love him. Hallelujah. So the promise has been given. He says, come to me. And when you come to me, what shall you receive? Rest. Now, it should be that rest should be expected. In fact, when you come to Jesus, you should expect rest. If you're not getting it, you need to ask for it. Because it is the birthright of every believer. Ay, 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 ay. I said rest is the birthright of every believer. You should, not be, you should not be worried. You should not be living a restless life if you are a believer. I'm not saying that troubles will not come. Troubles will come, but consider Jesus sleeping in the boat. That's some rest right there. That's the kind of rest we all need, right? Now that the building is on fire, let us warm our bodies. That's some rest. It's just, have you met somebody who is just looking like their lives are all put together? Me, I have, because when I look at you from here, all of you look like that. Your lives just look so put together, and I just want to come and ask you, what's the life hack you're using? But you see, there has to be something about it, because you have just decided the world will keep going on, I will just put my cares and burdens to Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 62, in the message paraphrase, um, is that Psalm, Psalm 62, I think, verse 1? It says, God, the one and only, I will wait as long as, as he says. Then the psalmist is asking, and why not? Because he's solid rock under my feet and breathing room for my soul. Psalm 62, I think, verse 1 and 2 in the message. You see, there's something about coming to Jesus Christ knowing he has promised you rest. Because you get there and you sit down. A couple of Wednesdays back in our Wednesday service, um, our sister Anne was leading the service. And she read something that was so profound. And I was standing in the back there. I was worshipping from the back there. And it was so profound. I thought about it throughout the service and even after we left home. And it has stuck with me since. She was reading a portion of scripture in the message paraphrase again. And says, you see, when you come to Jesus Christ, the line that she used was, you come to him once you arrive. You never regret that you knocked. You come to Jesus Christ and the moment you arrive, you never regret that you knocked the door. And I know some of you are, are having the very same experience. That ulipokuja kwa yesu, how jawai regret. Come rain, come sunshine, the things become difficult. There's, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a, I don't know that to call it a chama, there's a boys group that I belong to. <laughs> I know there's a boys group that I belong to. And it has people from different walks of life, different um, uh, professions, I think three of us are pastors, the rest are, you know, doing different things in the city, business, law, there's a cop inside there, like, with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the theme song for our group, we've had the group running for a couple of years now, since before COVID, the theme song for our group is an old Kikuyu hymn, I know, and we are not all Kikuyus, I... First of all, myself, I'm not. But then there are like other people who are not all Kikuyus. But our theme song is an old Kikuyu song because the day that it was unfolded to us by our um, organizing secretary, uh, it was like a testimony he was sharing. And I mean, he, he laid it out and told us the meaning of the words and posted it in our group. And we sang it. And by the time we were meeting in, one of, in our next meeting, we sang it together and we decided that's our song, guys. The song says, let me um, translate it. It says... <sighs> Hey, Pastor Beatriz, mekuru ni nini? Mabonde. I said, mamekuru ya rika. Mabonde ikikuwa deep. When the valleys are deep, and when the mountains are high, help me, my God, that I will not get lost therein. Renew my strength, become my leader, and help me to trust you even when there is darkness. And every time I think about those words, I think about the truth and the reality of the Christian experience. I was saying just yesterday again with some of my brothers, how, what a roller coaster sometimes life can be. Because one day you are at the top of the mountain, you're just like, I'm on top of the world. And then two days later, 
or even at the end of the same day, you are down, you have hit the rock bottom of all, you have hit the basement of rock bottom. And you are stuck there wondering, ha, ah, what an experience life is. And I know I'm speaking, like I said again, to people who are trying to navigate the mekurus of life and the irimas of life. But you see, what we have been promised as we go through those things is rest. The birthright of every believer is rest. Because the Bible, as the psalmist said in Psalm 62, he has become solid rock under my feet that I will not go under and breathing room for my soul. There it says, he is solid rock under my feet, breathing room for my soul, an impregnable castle, a castle that cannot be penetrated, and I am set for life. That's the experience of every believer. If you're not having that experience, believer, come to Jesus. You see, the invitation of coming to Jesus, let me just finish here. The invitation of coming to Jesus is this. It's not that it is for unbelievers. Many times we have thought about it, about this portion of scripture, and thought it is just for the unbelievers. We're saying, the believe, the unbelievers, let them come to Jesus, those who are heavy laden and broken. But you have been in salvation long enough to know it is possible to be in salvation and to be laboring and to be heavy laden. Just with the explanation we've, we've given. Lord, zambaza wo umebeba, umejitweka, na zingine ambazo umekelewa na watu. That's not sin. That's why we said it's not sinful things. It's not loads of garbage. There is that for the unbeliever because there is no amount of garbage and rubbish like the one an unbeliever carries. Because the enemy places baggage on you, heavy, heavy weights on your back. He loads you every day with horrible things. You must come to Jesus running. Your life will never make sense. Because sometimes we get the semblance of the burden is so heavy, unabeba, unayueka chini. You rest for a few days and then you're like, ah, now I'm good. Then you carry it again. You, ama, along your journey, you start taking the help of different people. Some, somebody along your journey calls, uh, called alcohol says to you, let me carry that load off the mind that you have. And then the alcohol takes it, anakuzindikisha kidogo. Alafu, the alcohol high goes down. Anachana na kwa safari. The load, is it still there or is it not there? So you are not carrying it for a few hours when you are high and drunk, but now, hajaweza kukubebea, hadimuisho. Because you cannot be perpetually drunk. You cannot be drunk forever. The high is going to go out. Little by little. So if you decide to take that journey and to enroll other people or enlist other people along the journey to help you with the carrying of the load, it is temporal at best. Utabeba kidogo, ufike mahali. For some of us, we are enrolling or enlisting our friends and our people, even the finest of teachers, even pastors. You're enlisting them upon your journey of carrying the load. And you're like, I, will, I may help you for a bit, but I will not help you forever. Because I am human, I am limited at best. So a lot of us are stuck in that loop, in that cycle of we are carrying the load for a few moments, unasaidiwa mahali, unafika, and unapata, ah, amenisaidia sasa niko na nguvu. Every time I go for the ropes camp, and I haven't done the hike in a couple of years, actually since COVID myself, but people still do that. And whenever I have done the hikes in the past, it gets to a time that even as a counselor, the weight I'm carrying is not heavy. I'm carrying just a small bag with a water bottle. But if you're walking a long distance, even the weight of a 500 ml water bottle is heavy. It feels like a bag of stones on your back. That's what a lot of us are doing. We are carrying, it may be seemingly small loads, but if you carry it for the long haul of life, beloved, it is a deathly load on your back. So we enlist other people to help us. If you come to safari, you can be a woman, 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 you can be a There are some loads that have been placed on our back, some responsibilities that we have that you can't pass to anybody else. Apart from the unbeliever, now we are also talking to the believer. Some of the loads that you're carrying, the responsibilities you have, people still expect you to help at home. People sp still expect you to, to give them ideas. People still expect you to show up. Even when you're tired, people still need you to fulfill your obligations. If you're a parent, you can't just decide, ah, I am tired. So what do you do? Other people can help you, but for a bit. But there is a friend, the Bible says, that sticks closer than a brother. That invites us and his strength is unfailing. His arm is the everlasting arm. He can help you carry that load 
into the very end, into eternity. That is the same one whose name is Jesus that says to us, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And he gives a promise and says, I will give you rest. That I wake up in the morning and I know there are things that are waiting for me today, at the end of this week, at the end of this month, at the end of next year, but still I have rest in my soul. Remember the song that Maverick sang some time back and they said, I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. And when everything around me is changing, I've got okay, peace that makes no sense. Because I put my hope in Jesus and he'll never let me down. He's faithful through generations and why will he fail now? He do? He won't. <laughs> he will not fail. You can trust Jesus. And to give you an opportunity, as we've been speaking right now, whatever it is, loads or labors that you have upon your back, I want you to just lift up your voice and ask God to help you. I want you to come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. And there's no other way to come but to come. There are no formulas of coming to Jesus. You just come. You bring yourself to him. You say, Lord, here I am. He doesn't need you to bring your load in a fancy way. He's not asking you to wheel it in. He's saying, just come to me, all you who labor. Just come, however it is. But we said, even though the invitation is wide, it is also made narrow because you must acknowledge that you're carrying a load on your heart. For some of you, maybe it's the weight or the load of offense. Maybe you're not offended by people, but you feel offended by God because you're wondering, why has God not come through yet? You can come to Jesus. For some of you, it is the weight of doubt. That's the thing that's heavy on your heart. You're wondering, does God really exist? Does he really care about me? Come to Jesus. Let him give you rest. For some of you, it is the, the responsibilities on one side and the resources that you have on the other side. And the responsibilities by far outweigh the resources. For some of it, it is not even physical resources. It is emotional resource. You feel like you do not have the emotional resource to handle the responsibilities. But you can come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's the only one who can truly carry the load for you. He can lift up your burden. He can carry you through. Come to Jesus. Come and lift up your voice. Just one more minute. Say, Lord, here I am. Lord, I come. I am coming to you. I am coming to you right now. And I'm not coming alone. I'm bringing my weight. I'm bringing my labors. I'm bringing my heavy heart. I'm bringing it to you. Do not leave this service the way you came, beloved. Bring it to Jesus. 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 He's done all the work, remember? He's communicated the kingdom to us in a violent but beautiful way at the cross. So you know he can carry that load. He can handle it. He's handled the weight of death, hell, and the grave. He can handle your weight. Bring it to him. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. The weight of your life, the weight of your education, the weight of your family, bring it to him. For some of you, the weight is that you are having to be the parent of your parent in this season. You hear other people give stories about their parents and how they are so cared and so caring and so concerned about their lives and they are, they are making plans for them. But you, you are stuck in the place where your mother or your father cannot take care of themselves and you're the one who has to take care of them. And that is a heavy burden to carry that you're now required to be the parent of your parent. Bring that weight to Jesus. Just mention it to him right now. He cares for you. Cares for you deeply. Hallelujah. 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 Just a minute longer. Just a minute longer. Let's fill this house with prayers. Let there be souls that are lifting up, saying, Lord Jesus, I bring this weight to you. I bring it 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 to you. For some of you, it is the weight of ministry. You want to serve the Lord with gladness, but maybe the resources you need are a lot and you can't handle it. You can't take care of it. You can't do it by yourself. Well, the good news is you don't have to be by yourself. Jesus stands and he makes the invitation. He says, come to me. Come to me. Some of your parents and your children are the weight that you're bearing. 
you can bring it to him today. Mention it to him. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Some of you are disqualifying yourselves and you're saying, no, I'm too far gone. I'm, I've not been living my life right. Well, you can bring it to Jesus just the way it is. Whatever load, whatever burden it is, bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. Some of it is cycles and addictions. It is chains that you placed upon your life. Bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus today. Bring it to Jesus. Bring it to him. Hallelujah. I want to make this final prayer for those of you who are in the house and you've never given your life to Jesus. Or maybe you gave your life to Jesus at some point, you fell back and you've never gotten back on the wagon again. And you are hearing him tug at your heart today and you just want to recommit your life to Jesus. You want to say, Lord Jesus, here's my life again. If you lift your hand, we'll see it and we'll pray with you. We'll see it and we'll pray with you. Just lift up your hand, do not be afraid. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just lift your hand and, and keep it there. Lift your hand and keep it there. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for every, every person who is trusting you. We thank you for those who are lifting up their hands and those ones who are making a decision inside of their hearts to come to you. Today, Lord Jesus, we come. We come to you without thinking about what the future has in store for us. We come to you without worrying and wondering what is happening. We come to you without thinking what anyone will think about us. We just come to you today, just as we are. Just as we are. Just as we are, we come to you today. We refuse to spend a day longer in the mess of our lives or in the impossibilities of how things look like. We come to you just as we are. We know after this service, Lord Jesus, you will still continue by the power of your Holy Spirit to pursue us with this word. And we want to let you know that, Lord, we are open for it. We are open for you to chase us down until you've got us locked into your goodness. We release ourselves to you. Because you are the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we honor you today. Thank you for the big invitation you've given to us. Even as we respond to you today. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him I should you